Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is going to be an update on my Revell 148 A10 Thunderbolt and a quick first quick look at just uh, some stuff I, I got recently. Uh, so in my previous video I mentioned that it was my birthday the other week and that I got um, what did I get? Oh yeah, I got the the C47, the C47 Dakota from Italeri. And that was going to use this in this DDA group build that's coming up. So I've got the plans to get some aftermarket for that. I'm going to get some resin engines, um, a photo etch set, and some and a little figure set, some US powers, and that's going to be that. So I'll, I'll get those things in the in the near future. But then my parents were up visiting the, the weekend there, and I hadn't seen them obviously for a while because they uh, I live away from them. So they came over and they had some gifts for me uh, for for my birthday. So. Now this year they'd actually bothered to listen and they just got stuff off my wish list, which is fine because it's it's all stuff that I actually wanted. Not that they ever get me stuff I don't want, but you know, um, it's stuff I actually, you know, actually wanted. So, so first of all, I got a, a set of paint brushes, um, just various round sizes, which are quite good. I'm not using them yet, as you can tell, still in the packet. They're just creative models ones, so they're not particularly expensive, but I think they should be slightly better quality than the. Games Workshop ones I kind of currently have, um, which are all fraying. Here's a particular one, as you can see, there is not an awful lot of that left. Um, I do have some other ones, but I've only got kind of three other normal ones, which are still okay to use, but they're you know good to have some fresh ones. Uh, I also got an Oata Neo, uh, finally. <laughs> Which is good, so it's over there. I've used it, uh, just had a quick spray around so you can see. Um was able to get some really nice thin lines there. And uh, yeah, it's good. I, I sprayed up just some little parts, just uh, put some primer onto uh, a couple of the bits of ordnance. Just to, well, mainly to try it out, but also because they, they needed some primer. And so the Vallejo primer sprayed really nice and smooth on there. And I can get quite good coverage and, sp and smoothness with the other brush I had, but this one is just even better. So perfect. Um, I probably showed you this before, but I got the Life Color flesh paint set from Cohen for my birthday. So thank you very much to him. And then also from my parents, I got the Life Color uh, US Navy set. Uh, now there's actually two sets of these, but the other one comes with like um, a mahogany colour for decks and some other kind of slightly obscure colours that are, are also used. But uh, I wanted this one because it's got the greys and the blues. Which should work fine for my US Desk Buchanan build, which I think will end up being this kind of dark greyish. It's a, dark, it's a kind of a... It's a bluish kind of colour it was in the late war, quite dark, so it might be this dark grey, which is actually almost almost kind of bluish. Um or maybe even just the deck blue might work, so we'll see. Anyway, they should uh they should be good for that. Um I don't have it here but it's o it's over behind me in my stash. But my brother got me the Revell one thirty fifth um PZH two thousand, the German self propelled howitzer which was on my list. And I'm uh, I'm so pleased with that because it's it's really well, it's quite difficult to find in the UK because I don't think they make it anymore. So it's uh, it's quite difficult to find it in the UK now that, that kit. And uh, I'd found one seller that was selling it, and they still seem to have some in stock. And it wasn't you know going to be coming from abroad or anything. So I stuck it on my list, and thankfully he got that. So that's another self-propelled howitzer. <coughs> excuse me for my stash, which means with the AS90 and the AUF1 that are built. The Trumpeter Type 99, which I'm actually building, but I'm not bothering to do a build progress on it because I'm doing it on so many other things. But I'll show you when it's finished. So that'll be three and then four. So that'll be have four out of my list of various intended SPGs. Anyway, the meat of this update. We're already four minutes in, and uh, I'm only just getting to it. Uh, I'm having to hold the camera quite away because this thing is huge. Uh, that's my hand next to this thing. It's, it's uh, pretty big. So I finally got some nose weight. I used this, which is a steel shot, which is actually used for like steel shot sandblasting. <laughs> we use it at my work for ballast or some stuff, and I just took some. 
frankly, because I've got bags and bags of the stuff and I just took a couple of little containers worth. I mixed that up with some PVA originally and it didn't really work, it wasn't setting. I think it started rusting the steel because it's just raw, it's not stainless, so it just started rusting in the glue and then I think as it corroded, it stopped the glue from setting and the PVA just wasn't strong enough. However, I've mixed a bit with the kind of bit, so it's in under the cockpit and stuff, so the stuff that kind of went under there seemed to set okay. Um, or at least it maybe just held in better, whereas the stuff that's kind of piled up the back here was just free and it also had fallen down here. So I mixed it with, I, I kind of, it was the because the engines are not attached, so I got it out, the stuff that was loose, mixed it with some epo two part epoxy and stuck it back in again and it seems to have dried solid now, so that's better. So there is um, plenty, oh, pl <laughs> is that, I'm, I'm waving it around as if you can feel how heavy it is. I think I've put a bit too much in there, but. Um, it certainly is not a tail setter. I've tried. Um, I've stuck the engine pod on and I've, I've placed the tail planes in, and uh, it's definitely not a tail setter. So there's definitely enough. The only thing I'm worrying about now is whether over time there's too much there that it might cause the front undercarriage to bow. Um, however, it's a relatively sturdy leg, so if it looks weak, I'll drill at the middle of it and stick a metal pin in it. I think. Um, I don't have the. I don't really have the cash to be buying or the 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 urge to buy any. Um, metal undercarriage for it so uh, so as you can see the fuselage was then buttoned up the wings are stuck on kind of a minimum gap on the top here not too bad a fit at all uh, that looks like a gap but that's actually just because there's a separate this plate is separate and doesn't actually meet up but it's not meant to so that's fine so there's not a gap there um, on the bottom uh, there was some quite big gaps, so I just filled them completely with the liquid, the plastic putty, and, and it's just got to be cleaned up. So hopefully, once that's cleaned up, it's not too bad. Uh, there are also three pylons to go on the on the fuselage there. So there's one here, one here, and one here. So that should also kind of help hide any uh, gaps, for want of a better term. Um, so the one thing I'm now worried about is basically how to get rid of the seam down the middle of the fuselage, because I guess you, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Let me just... So as you can see here, there's a really fine raised rivet detail that goes across the seam, all the way along, and like, you know, the, these, these things here. And this is all the way along, you know, and especially on the tail here, lots of servers. But there's a, there's a slight, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a gap, but it's just because the two, two parts are uh, the two edges are not perfectly 90 degrees so when you put them together although there's no there's, on the top on the very surface you get this kind of there's a, you know the gap between the fingers there you get this kind of slight trench so I will kind of put some putty in there but I don't know what the what is the best thing to use without it then obliterating because I can't stand that you know and these gaps are way too small to get so that's out of focus these gaps are way too small to get a sander in that, you know, at least any of the sanders I've got um so I'm wondering, would something more fine, like Mr. Surfacer or something, that you can just paint on and maybe then don't need to sand, would would that work better? So I, I would like your thoughts on that. If if anybody's wor worked with raised detail kits more and had this kind of problem, lots of raised detail crossing over a seam line, because, I mean, this seam line is really obvious, um, so I don't want to just leave it as it is. I need to do something with it. And um, there's some bits on the bottom where there's less... So like here, there's 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 nice kind of bigger bits where there's no seam crossing, but then up here, I mean, there's a glue mark, but then there's all these rivets cross there. There's a huge big seam up the middle. So I don't, I just, I'm I'm at a bit of a loss as how to combat that. So any ideas on that? Much appreciated. Um, and then so the next steps will be well we'll be sorting all that out and start to stick some of the other little there's only a few little bits and pieces still to go on there's a uh, pylons to go on the other wings and on the on the fuselage there the main undercarriage legs are built but there's about three or four different little parts of the undercarriage doors that go on to the struts and uh, uh, I'll probably cut them all off and paint them separately the wheels need to be made up, I'll paint them separately. Tail planes need to go on, but I'm going to stick, leave them off until I've got all these sanded just for access, ease of access. And the same with the engines. So I'll get the fuselage sorted, then I'll put all them on. Any tips on the seams on how to sort that without obliterating all that detail? Much appreciated. Uh, your general thoughts. And um, 
yeah, I'll keep this under 10 minutes for once. And, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.